My name is Cheyenne Rouhani. I'm a third year medical student and the vice president of the executive council. It is my honor on behalf of the three professional schools here to welcome each and every one of you. I would also like to extend a huge thanks to each of you who have played a role in allowing us as students to achieve our dreams of becoming medical professionals and researchers. I humbly ask that you continue your generous support of our campus to allow others like me to achieve their dreams. Thank you. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this day, and thank you for this opportunity. We ask that you would bless this institution as only you know how to bless it. Lord, we ask that you would bless Dr. Golly and his staff and give them the wisdom and the knowledge that they will lead this institution the way it should go. And thank you for all of these supporters, and thank you for everyone that has made it possible for this to come to pass. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. Lord, we ask that you bless us and give us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Lord, we just ask that you bless this today, bless each and every one in the sound of my voice and their families and their friends and their partners. We just give you praise. We thank you for what you've done, and we're thanking you in advance for what you're getting ready to do. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Green, for sharing that special thought with us today. Um, for those of you I've not had a chance to meet, um, my name is Lisa Babin, and I became the Director of Communications and Development here at LSU Health on September 1. So for many of you, you've been living through some kind of perilous times for a while. For me, I got to jump back in with all the enthusiasm that a girl has when she feels like she's coming back home. If you don't know, I previously served at the LSU Health Sciences Foundation, so for me, this was like coming back home. So despite the fact that the, um, the headlines in the paper, my first day of work was School of Medicine, a sinking ship, I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> And I want to thank each of you for being here today as we reflect on the journey of LSU Health, which began with a vision of some local physicians who envisioned what our community would look like with a school of medicine, which then became an academic medical center. Their original vision was that they, their families and friends, could seek the best possible health care right here in the community without traveling. Their vision has gone far beyond in that we now train over 1,400 medical students annually and we contribute over a half a billion dollars annually to the economy. Why are we taking out time today to reflect and yes celebrate during one of the most financially challenging times in the history of this institution? It is because our leadership understand that the challenges of life are what determine your legacy and the legacy that we choose is to remain steadfast in the commitment of our mission of outstanding patient care exemplary medical education, and the discovery of therapies and treatments that give hope and cure for diseases such as heart disease, cancer, ALS, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and the list goes on and on just as our commitment does. We also want to publicly commend the employees who have been here at such a tough time, being asked to do more with less to deal with the immensely complex transition for privatization of a hospital that had been under our management for many decades, a hospital that had not only rendered care to those with limited resources, but to those who could choose to get their care anywhere in the world, and they chose to get it right here at home. We also want to thank and welcome the LSU president, King Alexander, at our campus again. He always speaks so highly of our campus, of our faculty, and our staff, and we are grateful for his commitment and for him being with us here today. And of course, we want to publicly embrace our new chancellor, Dr. G.E. Golly. And while we have been best with many strong leaders in the history of this campus and many champions, I'd like to introduce one of the most revered champions, Bubba Raspberry. Bubba has made it his life's work to make our city and state better through his leadership locally and most importantly during his service as the past chairman of the Louisiana Board of Regents, which coordinates all of higher university. 
all of higher education in Louisiana. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you our community champion, Bubba Raspberry. Well, it's uh, a happy day for me to stand before this group when I see so many people that I know. And I see so many people that have contributed uh, outside of themselves uh, and through their professional excellence, they've given back to the universe, to this institution, but to our community. Uh, I, I'm uh, struck by some men that have given me uh, a model that were mentors who excited me as a young man to the notion of it's only as good as what you make it and about true philanthropy and giving. Uh, my dear friend and respected friend, Donald Zadick, Daddy Z, without you, most of us wouldn't be here. Thank you. Uh, also in the room is past chancellor, Dr. Ike Muslow. I spoke with Ike the other day and I was reminded of a meeting when uh, I, as a very young man, came with some other young men who were interested in trying to create something that would be the tip of the spear politically for the med school. We got wise counsel from Ike. I'm certain he thought, what, I don't need another group trying to do this. But ultimately, that has happened. You've got a support group. I think that spawned, uh, not necessarily, but the, uh, the foundation that's grown to enormous things, thanks again to Donald Zadick and the people that have been involved. I don't want to belabor the point. I see many of our elected officials here that I appreciate you being here. I appreciate what your job is. The importance of the health here, Shreveport, LSU Health Shreveport, to the community in Northwest Louisiana is uh, absolutely impossible to overstate. The entity that, uh, it, it is the entity that dramatically affects healthcare offerings in all of Northwest Louisiana and and it bleeds down below I-10, above I-10, everywhere. It does now, and it will for decades. It does so whether one chooses to seek the care of a community hospital, a clinic, or a partner hospital. It affects health care not only for our indigent population, but for those of us, like me, who might need complex medical care that, and that can, only, that can only be found in a community with an excellent medical center, where a medical center exists. It's very important. I am the beneficiary of the education, the expertise, and then the care from this very institution. It is quite personal to me. The Excellence in a medical institution like this is so important because it excites the interest of those in business when they are looking to locate or to relocate. A medical center affects our schools, our restaurants, our housing market, everything, because you have automatically a new cadre of people that are destined to be contributing good citizens to this community. Quality of life that the Med Center brings to this community and the elevation of it for all of its citizens is immeasurable. Our health center has been weathering extraordinarily difficult financial times due to no fault of its own. The extraordinary reduction in state funding to all of higher ed, which this center is a part of, and the mandate of privatization are the cause. It's time for this community to accelerate the awareness of the critical moment in the lives of the med school and our teaching hospital. 
Those of you who are with us today that are members of the media, I call on you because you and your family, like mine, are the recipients of the good works of all those connected with the Health Science Center. Community awareness will be heightened through your efforts. It's my hope, it's also my hope that all of the elected officials in Northwest Louisiana will participate in this renewed awareness effort about an institution and a hospital that is so dramatically needed by all of their constituents, not only for services provided but also for the economic impact that it has on them. It's time to focus on the positives of our med school and our teaching hospital. Our community deserves a best effort by all concerned, keeping in mind that it is public money, our tax dollars, that are in your care for the public good. We have a new chancellor. We're indeed fortunate to have a man extraordinarily capable. He has responded to, a, to the call of his state, this community, and this institution to do one thing, serve. I have great respect for all men and women who because of their diligence, education, energy, and, already, and that are already serving mankind in unique and wonderful ways because of what they've done with the talents their maker gave them. They often find themselves called by others to take additional leadership responsibilities. Dr. Dr. Ghali responded to a call in this most critical time, much as my friend Dr. Larry Ollier responded after Katrina to the Med Center in New Orleans. We in Louisiana are extremely fortunate to have both of these men as public servants. All connected to the Health Science Center are indeed blessed to have a leader with the depth of character of Dr. Golly. Ultimate leadership of any group or institution produces extraordinarily lonely times. When a decision must be made and the responsibility is yours and yours alone. I know my friend Dr. King Alexander understands what I just said. I would, uh, I would like to applaud you, sir, sir, and the LSU system on their prompt decision to appoint Dr. Golly to this chancellorship. It's my pleasure to introduce my friend, the bold and successful leader of the LSU system, Dr. King Alexander. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, and for all you do for LSU and higher education throughout the state. You're always there for us, and you always have been. This is such a great crowd, you'd, you'd think I was announcing a football coach or something. Um, <laughs> uh, but what a great turnout, and what a great job all of you do, all of you do, and how important this, this Health Science Center is to LSU and the state. The health issues of this region are some of the worst in the country, and you can only imagine if we weren't there to train the health professionals. And I know we've got a couple of our board members. I see Jim McCreary and former Ray Lassane. Thank you for all your help. Our legislators, thank you for your help. Uh, Chancellor Oye from New Orleans. Um, we've never had a partnership this close working together on behalf of all 4,000 students in this state that are in our health-related programs. Uh, I think Chancellor Clark is here from LSUS. Larry, thank you for all you're doing for your 4,000 students just on the other side of town. The health needs of a state are more than just about treating people and helping people live healthier lives. These issues are swamping state budgets from California to Florida, from Maine to Texas. More and more of our state budget is going into these issues and going into the health-related issues that it makes it hard to fund higher education and to fund the needs of our next generation. Our legislators know this well, and I would be remiss if I didn't remind our legislators any chance I get. But nine years ago, uh, during this last nine years, we've taken 15 cuts. And we have one we think is on the way again, number 16. 
our Health Sciences Center, when we take cuts, get hit from both sides. They get hit on the DHH health side, and they get hit from the higher education side. So it's doubly damaging to our health science centers and our medical students and our medical faculty and staff. About a year ago, in the midst of all the, the troubles that we were facing, including a $2 billion state deficit, which now we understand we've at least gotten that down to about $330 million, um, I asked Dr. Golly if he would step in and help manage the, med the medical center and the health science center in very difficult times. They are indeed very difficult times. We've just started a public-private partnerships all over the state, and he, he immediately, immediately took the helm and started working on the creation of new MOUs, mem memorandums of understanding, new partners, as well as working with the one that we have here at University Health so that we all could work together on this issue in northern Louisiana and in Monroe and other areas, that we're working together now like we've never done before. He helped create a new MOU right here with University Health that's resulted in $27 million additional dollars in income for our faculty and our students that are working nearby and in other areas as well. He directed the recruitment of Dr. David Lewis as chairman of the department of OBGYN uh, as vice chancellor of clinical services. This is particularly important because he has many new chairs that he knows he has to fill. He created the first time position, the Assistant Dean for Diversity Affairs, and recruited Dr. Debbie Chandler to this position. He created for the first time the position in Monroe of Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs and appointed Dr. Lester Wayne Johnson, where we'll be over there meeting with Lester Wayne later today. So he has already accomplished a great deal in a short period of time under perhaps the most adverse financial circumstances that LSU has ever been facing as well as what our medical centers are facing in this unpredictable period of time. So it gives me a great honor to introduce to you your new chancellor, Dr. G. E. Golly. Chancellor? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm overwhelmed by the, uh, the number of uh, friends and family members that are here today, faculty and friends and everyone. And uh, I tell you, for those of you that uh, know me, I I'm not into this kind of stuff very well. <laughs> uh, I don't mind throwing parties. My wife, Hope, and I like to throw parties, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm not good. Uh, Kind of reminds me of when I went fishing one time, and I came back from, you know, Hope sent me fishing on a on a, my 50th birthday or something, and went bone bone fishing in the Bahamas, and and when I and when I came back home, there was this big huge tent in the backyard that holds about 300 people, and uh, there were like people from all over everywhere coming to my 50th birthday party that everybody knew about but me. Thank you. <laughs> this is a little bit like that, but I, I, I want to sincerely thank uh, President Alexander and indeed uh, the entire LSU Board of Supervisors uh, for their unbelievable confidence in, in appointing me as Chancellor and Dean of, of our beloved Health Science Center. It's, it's an important place in, in, you know, for me, and I know it's an important place for you. Um, certainly, I care deeply about about this institution. I think it's it's an important part of Shreveport Bossier. Uh, it's both. Uh, uh, I have roots in this area, and it's I've practiced here for over two decades. Uh, met and married Hope, uh, thanks to Lisa Babin, who somehow has escaped this room. Some of you don't know, but Lisa actually introduced. Uh, Hope and I, and I can remember, uh, I got, certainly I, I remember that event, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> I, also, I also remember, you know, Dr. McDonald was at that event, and those of you that uh, know and love Dr. McDonald like I did, and 
including, including Dr. Muslow, he would appreciate this. And you know, Dr. McDonald comes up to me and says, you, you, you know she ain't too shabby. <laughs> so, and, 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 that, and that lack of shabbiness then resulted in these four kids that I had here. And, and for some of you that wonder, we're, we're, we're done. Uh, but uh, you know, I have Gregor and Gracie and Gabrielle and Garrison are here today. And really, it's, it's these precious children and my precious family and all of our precious families here that I mean, that's why I decided to do this when President Alexander asked me to do it. Um, and that's, that's really the only reason. And it's not just my family, but it's all the families that are in here, all the families that work in this Health Science Center, all the families that um, live here. We have something really special. I mean, there's only about 140 of these academic medical centers in the United States. We're very fortunate uh, to have this academic medical center in a fairly small community. You know, Shreveport Bozier, and Mr. Mayor, I don't separate, you know. And Shreveport Bozier, uh, you know, you, if you look at it, really it's Sparksdale and us. If we lose either one of those, we're hosed. And I refuse to be hosed, okay? It's not going to happen. So it's a really special place. Strengthening this campus not only improves the quality or the, the care available to our patients, but also serves as an economic engine for our community and a place where students and residents can pursue additional training, uh, educational training opportunities. Certainly I'm, I'm humbled and excited about the opportunity to play a major leadership role, but it ain't gonna work unless everyone out here helps me. And it's every single faculty member, every single employee. I don't care if, if, if it's someone in, in, the, in the janitorial service or, or someone in the operating room. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So I'm certainly humbled, and, and, and I promise to propel this Health Science Center. Um, you know, it's one thing to say it's going to stay here. It is going to stay here. It's one thing to say it's going to stay open. I'm not looking for it to stay here and stay open. I'm looking to see it excel, to be on top of, of academic medical centers in our region and, and, and nationally. I don't expect this to be an easy path. I certainly don't. Um, but change is not easy. I mean, we, we, we've seen change just in the last 48 to 72 hours. Uh, people get mad about stuff and they want things changed, whether it's good or bad. So I don't expect it to be easy, but I do expect it to ultimately lead to, to better days ahead. Even in the midst of our challenging financial times, we, we have some good news here on this Health Science Center, certainly. Um, uh, through collaborations uh, just in the past week, we've experienced a team of interventional cardiologists that performed the first dissolving heart stent in Louisiana. Uh, additionally, in conjunction with Cornell University, our researchers have received national recognition for gene therapy research that holds a significant promise in diminishing some of the effects of, of ALS. So we're still working. Recently, faculty in the departments of neurology and neurosurgery were really the first in the world to link obstructive sleep apnea with the development of worse outcomes uh, in things like cerebral aneurysms. So we're still doing research, and research is important. My vision for our Health Science Center is not just to survive, but to thrive locally, regionally, and nationally. Certainly, patient care is paramount in education in research. Those three areas are really what we're going to focus on. I want to thank the Bubba Raspberry for, for his presentation. I know it was very heartfelt. Uh, and knowing Bubba, I know he worked on it for, for hours and, and he did a wonderful job. I would, be, I would be out of control to trying to thank everybody that's here and those that are standing out, standing room only out there. Uh, uh, I see so many people here, Donald and Francis and everyone else, but uh, I just want to thank everyone and for being here today, and I want to ask each of you to, to join me in, in making sure that the best days for our Health Science Center are ahead of us, lie ahead of us. And, and I'm going to hold every single legislator accountable.
and I expect every single legislator to hold me accountable. God bless you and thank you.